Hello, good morning. Welcome to the EU's conference. We are delighted to have you here in Riga with us, which is a little bit cold, a little bit snowy, but it's amazing to see all of you in this room. We're so happy that this conference is happening once again. My name is Elisa and this is Sven, my co-facilitator, and we will be guiding through the conference these next three days. Before we start this very, very official opening, we have to say thank you to a few people who made this conference come true. Namely, the Ministry of Education and Science of the Republic of Latvia. Thank you. The European Commission. The European Youth Forum. And two more clapping. The Latvian Youth Council. And Microsoft. This is the official opening session, unless you didn't know it before. So we will have a few very useful and very short speeches for you. We will start with Luis Alvarado Martinez, the chair of the European Steering Committee of Structured Dialogue. So dear minister, Dear Latvian government representatives, dear European Commission representatives, dear DGs, and very importantly, dear youth delegates, it is my pleasure as new chair of the European Steering Committee of the Structured Dialogue to welcome you to this second EU Youth Conference in Riga under this fourth cycle. Thank you very much to the Latvian Presidency for hosting us here and for the great effort you are putting. It's also great to see so many familiar faces and many other new ones engaging with us today. Despite the challenges, I believe we can still call this the most one of the most advanced youth participation tools in the world. And despite this, this fact, I want to use these short moments to address all of you very clearly and very straightforward. This, what we're doing, is simply not enough. We're not here to waste anybody's time. We're here to ask young people in Europe how they want to see the future of European youth policy. And we have set a great deal of high expectations with this process from the very beginning. And I'm afraid we are not always living up to those expectations. So when I say this, I, I'm talking about each and every one of the actors, starting from the youth forum and the youth delegates themselves, but also to the governments and the European Commission. So firstly, to the youth forum and to the youth delegates, which you have given me the opportunity to be here. But sometimes we also have to be aware how we have sometimes over-dominated the discussions uh, leading to having mostly youth recommendations out of these conferences without sometimes listening to what governments has to, have to say. So my message to you would be that we have to show a bigger commitment and respect to our DGs, our, our DG representatives, their roles and their experience to make this successful. Now dear DGs, very shortly. <laughs> dear DGs, given the fact that I haven't been able to address you yesterday, I wanted to share that this process cannot work without you. This process cannot work without you sharing with the youth delegates what are your priorities, what is realistic and what is not, and what will be able to be pushed through on a council level. We need you and we want you to play a much bigger role in these conferences and help the youth delegates understand why governments make the decisions they make. These conferences have been called nice theater plays in the past and too often Real decisions are taken in Brussels because our outcomes are not always practical, cost-effective, and socially acceptable. So this has to change. And this is why you are so crucial here. The outcomes here should not be youth outcomes, but joint outcomes. We need you to feel the ownership of these two and help us address the ministers together uh, to improve the youth policies in the framework of what is possible and realistic in our times. And this is exactly what we're trying to do with this new architecture of the structured dialogue, which we will see much more in detail later. And last but not least, our dear friends of the European Commission, we acknowledge your will and the very hard efforts you're putting so far, but we need a, little, a bit more from you, starting by making a bigger efforts and anticipated coordination to get the Commissioner to these conferences. His presence is a strong symbol of commitment, but also performing the exact role which the treaty set for you on, under the open method of coordination to provide means to carry out peer reviews between the member states and monitoring mechanisms for the follow-up of, of this process. But friends, please don't take me wrong. All of this comes from uh, the spirit of healthy and clear feedback 
to be able to make the small changes that we need, that this great process needs, transform it to the machinery it is now, and to the real pioneering tool to improve the lives of young people in Europe. By slightly shifting all of our attitudes and involvements in this process, we will be able to make this a great process. For the first time, we will have the highest political figures discussing the exact same topics as us here, and this is something that we have to praise the Latvian presidency for, so thank you very much for that. We're almost there to make this an ideal process, so let us make the last step and have the real impact all of us are looking for. Once again, welcome to Riga and have a wonderful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis. Uh, we would now like to invite to the stage Ms. Marite Seile, uh, Minister of Education and Science of the Republic of Latvia. Welcome. Um, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor, really, to be here, here today. Uh, I'm sorry that this is... As, as people said, it's a very formal introduction and we have to keep short. Sorry, but I'll try to take everything what I want to say now, even if it will be not extremely short. And my very warm welcomes, welcomes here in, in Riga. And over the past three months uh, during the Latvian presidency as a minister responsible for different areas of, of youth, sport, education, research, science, innovation, and, and sport, I have been, uh, and uh, space, I have been addressing like different audiences. And I, I have to say that already today entering the building, I had a bit different feeling of different energy in the, in the building. And uh, my assumption is that this conference going to be one of the most uh, energize, energizing, one of the most dedicated and one of the very, very influential ones, I hope. And uh, youth empowerment for political participation in democratic life of Europe. It is not only the focus of, of this particular conference, but also a key priority on the youth agenda in, in Europe today. Already the Lisbon Treaty stated, union action shall be aimed at encouraging the participation of young people in democratic life in Europe. And we need to explore how we can empower the young people to be more active in taking part in the democratic life of our countries. Our intentions are serious and long-term, which is why Latvia has undertaken the issue of youth political participation side by side with the current trio presidencies, Luxembourg and Italy. Active civil society and active civic engagement is of great importance. From an early age, we want Europeans to be heard, to feel that their voice matters, and that they are a part of a society which, if needed, they would feel empowered to change. Active participation of individuals, as well as non-governmental sectors, such as youth organizations, is really essential to strengthen our democracies well-prepared, constructive, and representative opinion of stakeholders allows decision makers to be better informed in their work. When it comes to individuals, every vote and every bottom-up initiative counts. It is of utmost importance to build a society that cares. The ex opportunity to experience political participation in their own environment and local community from an early age is very crucial for young people to become active citizens. Young, active citizens were in the spotlight last week in Paris, where the European Union education ministers came together in a response to the terrorist attacks in France and, and Denmark earlier in this year, and recalling similar activities 
in other cities in Europe in recent past. The ministers endorsed a declaration on promoting citizenship and the common values of freedom, tolerance, and non-discrimination through education. The declaration stated the following. <coughs> Children and young people represent our future and must have the opportunity to shape the future. We must combine our efforts to prevent and tackle marginalization, intolerance, racism, and radicalization, and to preserve a framework of equal opportunities for all. We must build our own children and young people's sense of initiative and the positive contribution they can make through participation, while reaffirming the common fundamental values on which our democracies are based. This is the broader context and the political background for our work. Youth sector and youth work plays an important role in ensuring cohesive societies. Youth work and non-formal and informal learning contributes to personality development, promoting values of social inclusion, cultural diversity, active citizenship, and providing caring peer environment based on respect and tolerance. Youth work can also play a key role in reaching out to marginalized young people, in particular those outside of the formal education system and not in employment, this group being of particular vulnerability to radicalization. <coughs> Structured dialogue is a unique participatory process that allows young people from across the Europe to express their views on a broad number of issues entering in a direct dialogue with policymakers. The Latvian presidency really highly values the structured dialogue and the active participation and interest of more than 40,000 young people who were involved in the consultations across Europe on how to empower young people for political participation. During the consultation process that lasted almost five months, policymakers, together with young people, have scrutinized and discussed ways how to strengthen youth political participation. Many useful ideas have been put forward, and I wish you all the success during the conference to agree on final recommendations. Today, I would also like a also, I also would like to announce, as the Minister of Youth Affairs and the Chair of the Council of the Youth Ministers during the Latvian Presidency, that I will bring those very same topics on youth political participation in the democratic life in Europe for discussions to the EU youth ministers during the main policy debate at the Education, Youth, Culture and Sport Council on 18th of May. And before, beforehand, of course, uh, I will distribute uh, outcomes from, from today's conference to, to my colleagues, ministers in other EU, council, EU countries and inform them about the work done on the structure, structured dialogue process. To succeed with the implementation in the future, a limited number of priorities will need to be selected and closely followed up at local, regional and European level. On the other hand, the structural dialogue will always help to prove itself as an inclusive and transparent process. And uh, clearly, you have a very challenging task ahead in the next few days. And I wish you to keep your ambition, courage, and energy along the way. And uh, may this be really a successful conference where you get new friends, new inspiration, and most importantly, very practical recommendations which might be used for further discussion processes and implementation around the, the Europe. It's great to have good ideas, 
but we have to have very practical and concrete actions and capacity to implement them afterwards. And have a very warm and great stay here in Riga. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Seile, for your uh, welcome words and your commitment to the structured dialogue. I think it's very valued by all the, all the delegates and uh, all the people in this room, at least. Um, now I would like to invite on the stage Mr. Richard Skos, Parliamentary Secretary of the Prime Minister. Thank you. Good morning, Your Excellency, Madam Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly honored to participate at the EU Youth Conference here in Riga, organized within the framework of the Latvian Presidency. It is with feelings of deep joy and great pride that we can have a discussion about issues important to the youth, where decision makers meet the youth. As Sigmund Freud once said, if youth knew, if age could. I hope that this conference will mark a productive starting point to knowledge of the youth and activity of the decision makers. I hope that we will find several practical solutions to the challenges that the youth has been facing on a daily basis. I can tell from my experience that the youth NGOs have always been very important as it was my first fundamental experience in a civic participation. However, it is not the only way how to be socially, economically and politically active. Since every young person can share responsibility without participation or in organizations as well. Now when I'm working among the policy makers, this experience is a crucial part of my day-to-day -day agenda that defines and shapes my opinion about the decision-making process and importance of hearing and listening to those who are subjected to political initiatives and strategies, including the youth. I have several times emphasized that the youth in Latvia is and will be one of political priorities, as I believe that it is invaluable resource and the future not only for Latvia, but the Europe as a whole. Only an informed, co-responsible, enthusiastic and supported young person can help in development of new idea and establishment of new traditions in fields where changes and fresh approach is needed. Participation is an important aspect when speaking about such topical issues as involvement, education and employment that are still one of the biggest challenges for the youth. We should always remember that competencies, skills and knowledge obtained in youth organizations are afterwards useful in labor market. Moreover, experience gained in youth organizations is like a catalyst for implementation of business ideas. And there are plenty of examples. Of course, it is essential to support the youth not only morally. Youth organizations should be also supported financially with knowledge resources, by listening to, be, to the youth and working together. This definitely is an issue on which Latvian and European politicians have to continue working. As according to data, in Latvia only one in four young people regularly participate in any social, public or interest activity. However, only 6% of the youth are active members of organizations and only 2% are involved in political activities. While in Europe average, index is around 9%. I believe that you will agree that we can't just shut our eyes on this and we should change it gradually. It means that in the process of engagement there should be used those mechanisms and tools that speak to and can address the modern youth such as opportunities posed by the digital technologies and social networks because the way of communication with the youth has dramatically changed in the last decades. Political participation starts with trust that can be built only through cooperation. We have often experienced situations when an old man declares a war, but a young man should fight and die. According to the surveys, the youth have an interest in political processes, but the level of trust in state authorities is dramatically low. Yes, we have a lot to do, but we should avoid a vicious circle as we are developers of our country. Therefore, participation of each and every one of us is country's key to success. I'm pleased to see several excellent examples in Latvia that allow young people to step closer to the state authorities and to be involved in daily politics. 
One of the examples is the project called Youth Parliament. This year, it will be the fifth parliament term. The purpose of the project is to provide insight and experience concerning implementation of democracy. In the Youth Parliament, 100 intellectuals will take seats, creative and passionate young people who will discuss issues important for them to adopt the declaration later introduced to all parliamentarians at the end of the day. Only a few days ago, the elections of the Youth Parliament with 135 participants concluded. The number has grown by 34 participants during the past year. The election showed an impressive number of votes, almost 5,000, which is a sure sign that young people tend to support each other. Another project worth mentioning here is the Shadow Day that enables young people to get closer look at the work of decision makers and promote participation of the youth. As they become shadows of politicians, ministers, entrepreneurs, or even state president. I should also name here the e-platform project My Voice, about which many of you have, have already heard. Considering the digital era we uh, currently live in, this is a phenomenal way of how to promote, uh, promote participation in the society, how to spark young people's interest in discussing issues that are important for them. This project has already changed and will continue changing traditions of participation, not only in Latvia, but also in Europe. For instance, there's this vote on portal My Voice, initiated by young people who are against the requirement of Russian language skills at the job market. Nearly 3,000 people have already signed this, and eventually it will be submitted to the Parliament of Latvia. There are many examples of ways how we can promote political participation of the youth. However, it is essential to speak their language, use tools that are used by the youth, to ensure that each step of the youth people is followed by the step of the part of the decision makers. This strategy should be further developed across Europe. We often have discussions about, uh, we all, sorry, pardon. We often have discussions, but there are no practical solutions whatsoever. I hope that this conference will be a good starting point for new ideas that can be implemented in practice. Europe currently faces another challenge, restoration of its competitiveness, position, and power. By no surprise, the motto of Latvian presidency of the EU is the competitive, digital, and engaged Europe. However, Europe is searching for the Philosopher's Stone in order to face these challenges. I'm confident that one of the solutions is the youth. We have a powerful potential in our youth, and we must have the courage to change the old ideas and practices so that we may alter their power toward good deeds. Therefore, I would like to encourage youth not to be afraid. Don't be afraid to express your opinion, participate, and make mistakes since the man who never made a mistake never made anything. The country needs young people who are not scared to act. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and I wish you a very fruitful and successful discussions throughout the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Coles. Uh, before we continue, uh, we've seen there are a number of people here with smartphones. Um, that's great. Use them. We would like to focus your attention on the hashtag we have here on stage that you can use both on Twitter and on Facebook. To continue, uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Antonio Silva Mendes, Director for Youth and Sports, DG Education and Culture of the European Commission. Good morning, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here today with you. Thank you to the Minister for this organization. Minister, representative of the Prime Ministers, dear colleagues. Uh, it's my first opportunity to witness this very energetic uh, work of the Structural Dialogue, which I met uh, some time ago in the configuration of the Steering Committee. The Structural Dialogue is a, a unique, as you know, uh, infrastructure. Uh, no other type of dialogue exists at European level where all the different stakeholders uh, are invited to participate. Uh, 
My apologies uh, for the commissioner. He was not able to be here, but we will try to see if we can have uh, him on board in different occasions. Dear colleagues, we have to face now two different challenges. We have to increase the outreach. We have to increase how can we reach the people, the young people, the young, uh, um, the young people that usually are not inside of the system. But we have another uh, challenge is how can we have a cross-sectoral approach in this process? We can't imagine that the only way to sort it out the different challenges uh, that have been mentioned using only our, uh, uh, our approach. We have to link use, we have to link with the other areas, we have to link with education. Everybody, well, 90% of the people that are in education are young people, so we have to reach them. We have to reach all different uh, participants. Uh, our support at European level has been uh, traditional and we try to finance as much as possible. And we believe that the national working groups uh, that have been in place can support this. Uh, I would like to, to make a challenge to the young people that participate in the, in the national working groups. Usually we are saying we have to reach the, the, the young people that are outside of the system. Uh, so, but we can't do this using the same approach. We have to address the issue in a different context. So how can we reach the young people that are not in the education, not in the employment, not in a traineeship? So how can we reach them? How can we try to use the tools we have for that purpose. So we have to be imaginative. We have all together to think in a different way. The, 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 the ideas that we have launched on this Ideas Lab, where we want to have your feedback, it's very much appreciated. We want to have your ideas, but above all we have, we want to have ideas that we all together can materialize. How can we put in practice all these different, different uh, uh, aspects? So how can we reach the people that traditionally we are not looking for? Well, we have to associate local authorities, we have to associate the regional authorities. And the challenge I would like to, 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 to launch to you and to the national uh, working groups is, instead of organizing events and try to invite the young people, why not we all together go where they are? So the, and the commitment that I can give you is that if you organize this kind of events, if you organize this kind of, uh, of initiatives, we from the Commission side, if you want, if you need, we are ready to participate. So we can go where you believe it's important. And we have to take profit of the initiatives that we are doing. As you know, in one, one month's time, we have the European Week, we, the European Youth Week. We have to use this opportunity not only to reinforce, and we will do that, to reinforce uh, the structural dialogue. We have a conference for that purpose. But the question is, how can we use this initiative to reach the young people and to reach the young people in a sustainable way? It's not to say, okay, we will, we will tweet, and then we have 1,000, 1 million people that we reach with one tweet. Yes, it's good, but it's not enough. We have to reach them in a sustainable way. We have to reach them in order to bring them to the system. So we have to use all the different means, social media. Twitter is an excellent tool. How can we do that? This conference, I think it plays a very uh, crucial uh, 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 role and is organized in a moment which is very essential. Following the, the, the informal meeting uh, of the ministers last, uh, last week in Paris, 
we have been given some orientations. So we may say, we have the commitment, the political commitment of our masters. We are not fighting for that, we have that. So our obligation is how can we deploy, how can we put into practice the instructions that we have been receiving. So I think this is the message we would like to, to, uh, uh, to, to pass. And as uh, Minister Salad said, in the structural dialogue, we are reaching already 40,000 young people. <sighs> well, 40,000, it's good. But if we compare with the 14 million people that if we look at the, four, the, the, the 14 years old to the 30 years old people that are in the outside of the system, it's very weak. So how can we reach these this people? And this is really, from our uh, perspective, the big challenge. Try to use as much as possible this notion of the ideas lab in two a very concrete way. As I said, we are having now in one week, in one month's time, the European week, uh, the European Youth Week. But in four months' time, we will have the European Week for Sport. How can we link? How can we link both initiatives? How can we use sports to address this exclusion aspect that young people are, are crossing? So the main challenge we have is this, to try to use as many structures, as many uh, means we have for, for, for that purpose. During this conference, we are addressing a number, you in particular are addressing a number of issues under the big theme of uh, empowerment of young people for political participation. This is cru crucial. This is the right moment for doing that. We have uh, the obligation to do, but then in concrete terms, how can we do it? And how can we do it in a more sustainable, uh, uh, in a more sustainable way? The structured dialogue enables most concerned people to engage in the discussions. You are here to discuss. You are here uh, uh, to try to lead these different aspects, the different uh, discussion with the different organizations. What are your role? What can we do all together? But uh, forgive me to insist, our main challenge is how can we translate these discussions that we are all together very enthusiastic agreeing because it's very easy in, my, in one sense for me to talk with you because the message I'm passing, you will receive it. You agree, we are in the same longer, uh, uh, the, the, the same path. So the challenge we have is how can we translate this common sense, this agreement that we have at our level at national level, at regional level, at local level, on the street level. So this is the challenge we have in front of us. How can we use the instruments we have to increase the fight against exclusion? How can we uh, increase the fight against the, the, the intolerance and this kind of uh, passive attitude, as Minister said, well, we one in four and the, the, the representative, one in four in Latvia. But at European level, we have the, the situation is not better, even worse. So how can we really bring back young people to participation? Because this is the only way we have to challenge and to fight against this uh, exclusion and uh, to fight against the intolerance. So the challenge is in front of us. Uh, but the challenge will not stay here. The challenge will, will be with you when you turn back to your countries, when you turn back to your normally work. And this is the main message we, 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 I would like to pass to you. We have to think in a holistic way. We have to think in a cross-sectoral way. We have to think in a very action-based way. What I can say to you is that I can commit myself that either me or all our colleagues in the Commission will be at your disposal if you think it is important, if you think it is useful that we participate. Because it's very good for us to be in Brussels in our 
buildings in our, in our offices, very good. But above all, the reality is not happen at European, uh, uh, at Brussels level. The reality is happen in the street. So if you believe we can count, we would be useful, please count on us. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you to the, the, the Latvian presidency and the minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendes, for all these food for thoughts. And now I would like to invite Johanna Niemann, uh, President of the European Youth Forum, to give her a welcoming speech. Dear Minister, dear authorities, dear Commission representatives, DGs and youth delegates, dear friends, it feels re really great to be here with you today and for the coming days. I want to start by thanking Latvia for hosting this EU Youth Conference and also for showing a true commitment to this important process. I also want to thank the European Steering Committee, the national working groups, as well as the INGYOs contributing to this process for your hard and committed work. This is my first time addressing the EU Youth Conference as the president of the European Youth Forum. And while preparing for this speech, I started to reflect on my experience of this process. My first conference was during the Belgian presidency in 2010. And I can see since then that the structured dialogue has been growing a lot has been, been becoming stronger, and for sure, in man, many ways, also better. This really illustrates that we need to have a dialogue between decision makers and young people. This illustrates that a lot of effort, a lot of political commitments have been put into this process. Riga should mark another step forward further increasing the quality of the dialogue, making sure that we have an even sharper political message, that we talk about the things here that we face in our everyday lives, but also to ensure the dialogue. I think the key for this conference is having discussions, focusing on the dialogue. Recognizing that we're all taking part in this conference in order to discuss and to exchange experiences and ideas as equals in a transparent way. Transparency consisting of young people and decision makers discussing together on the same level, openly, without any closed doors. The European Youth Forum calls on the youth representatives as well as the ministerial representatives to use this platform for meaningful discussions to make sure that the outcomes are used and valued. I will leave the process there. The topic of youth empowerment for political participation, it's so important and extremely relevant today in Europe that I'll just jump into this, this subject without too many reflections on the process of the structured dialogue. When it comes to youth participation, one year ago we had the European Parliament elections and they clearly showed us that there is a very high level of youth absenteeism when it comes to elections. Only 28% of young people voted in these elections. And it really shows that the divide between the democratic institutions in Europe, the representatives of the, and the political parties on one side, and the young people of Europe on the other side, that the gap between these two is big and it's growing. And the number of young people that are not engaged in political processes is very high. And that is something that for sure jeopardizes the future of the European integration process. At the time of crisis of the EU, there's a lot of Euroscepticism, a lot of critics against Europe. I think it's more relevant than ever that the EU and member states focuses on engaging young people into the processes because we are the most EU and Europe positive generation. On the specific priority of youth empowerment for political participation as the European Youth Forum, we have very high expectations on the joint recommendation, but also of the council conclusions that will be decided from the Luxembourgish presidency. We count on this. The youth empowerment is on the top of the youth forum's political agenda, and we demand a Europe that recognizes the right of young people to knowledge, tools, and access to participation in decision making on issues that affect us, that affect our daily lives. 
As we know, a lot of young people are not engaging politically because there is a huge gap in the education system. Civic and citizenship education does not speak their language. And here I see a huge challenge in non-formal education providers should work together with formal education providers in order for empowering young people. Empowering young people, it's essential to address the general disinvolvement of young citizens towards politics. But when we talk about empowering young people, I think it's important also to see the other side. We have to empower the, the decision makers as well. They need to be empowered to learn how to work and engage with young people. This is not an easy task. We have very high goals set for ourselves. And one thing that is sure is that we need to work together, hand in hand, in order to achieve this. Young people are lacking representation and access to tra traditional policy processes. This we can see clearly. It is an essential right of the citizens in a democracy to access political processes. The European Union has obligation, it was already cited from the treaties, encourage the participation of young people in democratic life in Europe. However, at this moment, the Union has not done a lot to answer this obligation. What I want to stress is that the European Youth Forum doesn't believe in the negative stereotype that many times is put on young people, that we are not active, that we are not participating, that we do not care. We recognize that there's a number of different ways for young people to participate in society. Today we can also see that there are some switches in the forms of engagement among many young people who do not see maybe voting or being a member of a political party as the best way of expressing their political views. Even if many young people feel excluded from the political processes, we are still highly motivated by political causes. We should not make equal signs between these two. There is a high number of young people who participate in volunteering activities, showing that today young people in Europe participate very actively in social and political life. This can be done through volunteering, online debating, social media, petitions, demonstration, debates at local level and youth organizations and youth organizations. Young people are very engaged in youth organizations and structures at all levels, from local to the European one. The European Youth Forum is proof of this. We, pr we are proudly built of 99 youth organizations and we do through them represent the voice and the dreams of tens of millions of young people. One great example I also want to mention to you, which is not a structure which is not organization. It's the European Youth Event that was held last year in Strasbourg in May. I know that some of you were there. It, according to me, it was a great event. 8,000 young people taking the floor of the European Parliament, actively sharing the visions of the future of Europe, engaging in dialogue with decision makers and having fun. The visions, dreams and fun of the European Youth Event was also communicated in a number of hearings in the European Parliament. I think this would also be a great inspiration for participation. I want to highlight the potential of youth organizations and different kind of platforms in bridging the gap between decision makers and young people. This should not be forgotten and this is something that has not yet been sufficiently used. Dear friends, participation is not a luxury, it's a basic right. Relinking young people into political processes, making sure they have the power to affect the reality of their own lives, it is crucial for the well-being of our societies and for the well-being of Europe. The rising wave of extremisms all across Europe, they also tell us that now is the time to act. Act to include all young people into this decision making. Act to create a stronger sense of belonging of each young person. Act to make sure that young people have the voice to claim their rights and to have access to their rights. Riga should mark another step forward. Let's make this step together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johanna. Uh, the last speaker before the coffee break, so please bear with us, uh, is Mr. Emils Anschkens, the president of the National Youth Council of Latvia.
dear participants of the conference and uh, also the viewers online. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you here in Latvia for the U European Youth Conference. We are very excited to lead the process of structural dialogue after four months of consultations happening in all of 28 European Union member states. The topic for the discussions was youth empowerment for political participation. And I think that the structural dialogue is a good way to start the process. 40,000 young people have participated in the consultations. That's the population of a small town, just as big as the one that I come from. Is it enough? Do we want to stay there or do we want to go further? Our goal is to empower millions of young people all across the Europe and show them the potential of making a change in local, in regional, national, and European level. An impact can be started very simply by joining an NGO, by signing a petition, by participating in discussions and debates, by meeting politicians and policymakers, and also by being active online. We, the young people, are excellent when it comes to using social media and internet. Also, more and more new ways of uh, using online tools for political participation arises every day. They surely give more ways of participation, but do they reach the target? Does the chance of young person to be heard and to influence policymakers becomes bigger? Unfortunately, not always. We have to remember that no tools can work if it is not supported by both sides. Youth have to understand the process and find it interesting. And policymakers have to have a solid outcome, uh, advice from youth that they can use. Dialogue is a two-way process. One has to speak and the other one has to listen. So when speaking about political participation, we can't leave out the policymakers. They have to listen what young people have to say. Otherwise, the participation that we strive for will be useless. We live in democracy, but even something that all the democracy is changing. People, especially young people, no longer want to participate just by casting a vote every few years. We want, we want to engage more. We want to see and speak to politicians face to face. We want to uh, be listened to. We want to share our ideas and cooperate. The older generation of policymakers have to understand the new style of democracy. If we don't adapt, we will end up with a generation with no voters at all. In Latvia, we implement structural dialogue by asking young people and policymakers to come together in informal setting and to work together on the issues, not as enemies, but as partners. We see that it changes the way politicians see youth and how they interact in future. We see that when political politicians experience the positive power of active participation, they start to love it. During the conference, a lot of new and interactive tools have been proposed to raise the political participation. And it is our job for these days to decide which ones should we implement first and as a standard for youth, participa youth participation and which ones of them are just a theater play and don't get the aim. So I encourage you all to work together as equal partners and let's make the, this conference uh, good ones both for both sides, for youth and the policymakers. Thank you.